Yeah. Okay. Tell me if I'm going over the line here, but uh, it's always been a dream of mine to meet Julie and Louis Dreyfus and <laughs> just meet her in person. And what happens just... when there are disputes between two different parties? We're going to look into that and in the process of watching this clip from Curb Your Enthusiasm, we will also get some insights into a couple important economics topics. The idea of externalities, those are side effects when somebody not involved in a transaction is impacted by a particular action others take, and property rights, and why property rights are so important. And with that, we'll also talk about what's called the Coase Theorem from Nobel Prize winning economist Ronald Coase. Let's go to some clips spliced together from the episode The Wire from Curb Your Enthusiasm right now. Not a good maniac. Yeah, that's not a good maniac. Larry, Cheryl just called. She just wanted me to remind you to come home early tonight, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Why are you going to be home early? We got this wire in our backyard. Uh -huh. And my wife is completely obsessed with taking it down because it's ruining the view. Mm -hmm. So she wants to bury it underground. In order to do that, we have to get signatures from adjacent neighbors. Mm -hmm. Five have signed on. One couple won't sign it. They want to meet us first. Have you ever heard of anything so nutty? Never. Why are they doing it's that? It's really wrong. It's very wrong. Wow. It's so, so wrong. Hey, the problem. There it is. That's what we've been looking at. Can you believe it? Dean? Jesus Christ. Huh? It was like that when we moved in, and it has been <clears throat> bugging me so much I can't even I'm, tell I'm going to get a divorce, I'm telling you. I can't, <laughs> I can't take her anymore. Oh, that's horrible. True. Tell yeah. me exactly what has to be done with that, because that has got to be fixed. That's horrible. All you guys have to do mm -hmm. is sign some papers. Right. We've and taken care of everything yeah, else. Yeah, they put it underground. It's all environmentally it's safe. And this has to be buried. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let the machine go. It's yeah. okay. Oh, no. Can I ask you a question? Um, do the cast members ever come over to the house? Do they come here and just hang out with you by the pool? Or? Well, not, not by the pool, but they, they, have, they have come over, yeah. They're they, friends. Dean, why don't you just tell the truth and tell them who your well, biggest... I'll just say it. She played Elaine on the show, Julia. He's obsessed with her. He thinks she's just like, the most like, talented like actress Julia. in the yeah, world. Yeah, she's great. Okay, I think she's not just beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And she's not just talented, she's sublime. Yeah. And Tell me if I'm going over the line here, but uh, it's always been a dream of mine to meet Julie and Louis Dreyfus and <laughs> just meet her in person. And if you could just make a phone call and make that happen, that would be so great. You know what? Um, I'm be... more than happy to call her up. I can't guarantee. Larry and Cheryl have a power line they would like to move. Looks incredibly annoying to them, it's ruining their view, but they need permission from their six neighbors. They need six signatures on the form to move the wire underground. Presumably those signatures are needed because the wire is above ground and a wire would probably go under their ground. They would need the signatures to be able to do it. They have secured all of the signatures except the signatures from one individual. The last neighbors, the ones we see them meeting with, aren't quite as keen on moving the wire. What's fascinating about this is the idea, first we'll talk about externalities. An externality occurs when a transaction between two different parties impacts a third party. And it's particularly relevant when they have this, the property rights behind the particular action. So. There is this wire that exists. It's the government and all the neighbors have agreed, and it's impacting the Davids negatively. Often with externalities, you'd call for government action to tax the externality, but this one's not quite the same. It's not like pollution, where you have two parties, one buying, one selling. The product pollutes and it affects others because there are property rights involved for the others. Presumably, some of them might want an external wire over a buried wire. So it is negatively affecting the Davids. And while we talk about externalities in principles classes, I don't know that this one quite fits, but I wanted to bring that up first. The question, of course, comes, what do you do in this particular situation? Larry wants the wire buried and the neighbors don't. Larry and Cheryl want the wire buried, but the neighbors really do not want it buried, or at least they're putting up a little bit of a fight about it. 
Well, you could have the government come in and say particular parties being harmed. It can be costly. It can be inefficient. Governments make mistakes all the time. What Ronald Coase, who created what was later called the Coase Theorem, showed that as long as you have clearly defined property rights, the optimal solution will occur as long as the transaction costs are negligible. Why would this occur? It's precisely from what we see in this part of the episode, and it's the bargaining that takes place. The neighbors involved here don't seem too keen on burying the wire. They don't care. Uh, presumably, they'd rather have the wire external. Uh, might, must not be affecting their view. They don't really want to do it, but it's harming the Davids. So they could move it, but in order to move it, they need to be compensated. And they're not looking for money. They're looking for an opportunity to meet their favorite celebrity. Now, if the cost to the Davids for bringing in uh, Julia, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is low enough, or to be more specific, if it's lower than the cost that they perceive about seeing the wire, they should be able to come to a transaction, to come to a solution where she comes in, they meet, the form signed off on, the wire's buried. Let's go ahead and watch a little bit more, see what ends up happening in the particular episode. Thanks again for it's, doing this. Listen, it's fine. But you know what? I gotta tell you something. I've got ten minutes. Tops. Okay. That's like it. All because right. I gotta we'll get, get to s- school, here. the whole thing, okay? okay. No really. <clears throat> Who is it? It's Larry David. Larry? Are you and by yourself? N- no, no, I'm with um Julia. Me. Ju- Ju- <laughs> oh my. Are you okay? Oh my God! Julia Louis Dreyfus. This is Phyllis. <laughs> Hi, it's a stuff. nice to meet you. I'm, are you okay? Yes and no. Oh dear. Yes and no. Um, my cat died. My cat died. Oh. Please come in. Come, please come in. Please sit down. Please, please, please. We're. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, where's Dean? Uh, Dean's with Jeff. What do you mean? He's why is he with Jeff? Who is Jeff? I Jeff's you know. my manager. Yeah, Jeff Green. He's with Jeff. Um, there. Uh, he he called. He said, "I'll be home in twenty or twenty-five minutes. Don't let them leave." Oh. And I said, "Don't worry um, about I that. I won't I let them." I can't wait this long. I can't really. Um, I you know it is just bad timing. This is just bad timing for me. I've got to get out of it. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry about your your um your cat. Yeah, and and its tail had been trapped uh, when uh, the gardener came over. It had been trapped in the lawnmower, so it lost. God, lost half its tail. Poor kid. I don't, you know what? I don't want to talk about mittens. Yeah. I've got a better idea. You didn't take your bracelet. That Cheryl's bracelet, Julia. You keep the bracelet now. I don't want it in my house. I don't hey, want you to Dean, come. Come, nice to come on in. Dean, look, look who's it's Julia Louis Dreyfus. Remember? This is Dean. We, we went over his house the other day. It's Julia. This is fantastic. I can't believe we're actually meeting like this is great. You were supposed to come the other day and you, you didn't show up? Okay, can you, I tell you something, sure. my friend? Tell me. When you make appointments, keep it. Because now I'm busy and I can't talk to you anymore. Julia. Keep your appointments. I think I'm nauseous. She's certainly a lot different. As usual in Curb Your Enthusiasm, there's always a little bit more drama than what one might normally expect. But the Coase Theorem, hopefully you come away with this uh, understanding a little bit more about the Coase Theorem and the idea that as long as property rights are well-defined, you could reach a optimal solution. With that optimal solution, uh, the spread of the benefits can vary depending on who the property rights are assigned to, but an optimal solution will occur as long as transaction costs are low enough. Now, property rights in general, they're incredibly important for reaching this bargain solution. They're also really important for economic growth 
And well-defined property rights as a society have been shown to lead to societies that have much lower pollution levels as well. So it's, it's good for society in a number of different ways. We'll have videos that maybe dive into those issues a little bit more in the future. Hope you enjoyed this particular episode. I'm dropping episodes weekly in honor of the final season of Curb Your Enthusiasm that show economic lessons from this show. So please like and subscribe and Hopefully I'll see you next week in the next video in the series. Take care.